everybody. Good morning. It's good to see you. Why don't you stand on your feet and let's give our great God a great praise this morning. Jesus, we're here for you. Be lifted up. Be high and lifted up this morning. Come on, church. Let's put those hands together. Come on. and glorious we put our trust in your name Jesus you're able to save and deliver us and we put our hope in your name Jesus and it's the part we all sing out together and blessing
with the battle you see my victory oh when all i see is the mountain you see a mountain moved and as i walk through the shadow your love surrounds praise this morning. Thank you, Lord.
just this old song I'm reminded of. It says this. Oh, and has the deer panted for the waters of my soul longest after subject of our desire this morning, God. We fix our eyes, we fix our gaze, we fix our attention, our best intention, our best attention on you this morning, God. You've been faithful, you've been good, and we worship you for who you are, God. As we draw near to you and draw closer to you through your word, God, we, we remove any distraction, whether it's something that we're thinking about on our way here or something that we might be meditating on now, God, we put that to the side and we put you in your rightful place. God, open as we draw closer to you through your word, open up our eyes, our ears, and our understanding. God, we don't want to leave here the same way we came in. And we thank you for the truths of your word this morning. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. How are you guys feeling this morning? Yeah. Hey, can y'all do me a favor? Can y'all help me welcome our friends that's joining us online? What's going on online, campus? Sunday, y'all. It's good to see you. Thank y'all so, so much for worshiping with us this morning. It's going to be a great day. Before we do a single thing, I want you to do me a favor. Turn to the person to your left. Turn to your right. Say, welcome to church. Welcome home. Sit down and check out what's going on this week at Highlands. It's Kendall, and I hope you've enjoyed your experience so far. If it's your first time with us today, welcome home. We are so glad that you're here today. We're about to hear from God's Word in just a moment, but before we do that, we've got a lot of exciting things going on at Highlands Church that we don't want you to miss out on. So take out those phones and notes and lean in. Here we go. On the back of the seats today, you'll find a QR code nearby. When you scan that link with your phone's camera, it will take you to what we call a connection card. Our connection card is, in short, our way of connecting with you. There's places where you can fill out prayer requests or even request more information about our church. Feel free to scan that QR code and fill that card out during our time together today. The fall season is a time of new routines, new schedules, and new beginnings, which makes it a great time to jump into next steps. When you come to Next Steps, you'll learn more about what's happening at Highlands and learn how you can be a part. It's the perfect place to get plugged in and connected. Next Steps gathers every Sunday at 11 a.m. in our Dream Team Central Room. Just make your way directly across our lobby and our Next Steps team will be happy to get you to where you need to be. Step one of Next Steps is today, so make plans to hang out with our Next Steps team. Step two is next week on November 13th, so mark your calendars now. We look forward to seeing you there. If you're a parent of a student and would like to stay in the loop on what we're doing at Highlands for our 6th through 12th graders, we've got an opportunity for you to do just that. After service, stop by the Red Easter table in the lobby and scan the QR code to get updates about Highlands students' events. Last, but certainly not least, our At The Movie series is coming next week. At the Movies is where church and movies meet, and it's one of the easiest times to invite someone to church. We are only seven days away from our first At the Movies message, so invite your friends to church this week. Our team has been working so hard to get ready for At the Movies, and we're ready to reveal something special for you guys to watch before the message today. So check out the screen for an exclusive look at At the Movies.
Good morning, good morning, good morning. How's the greatest church on the planet doing today? Ah, oh, it's so good to be home. It's so good to be home. I enjoyed speaking and ministering at, uh, at South Point Church in, just outside of Memphis, Tennessee. Had a wonderful, wonderful time at Pastor Craig Wendell's church. Great church, but there is no place like home, everybody. I am thrilled um, about next week. Uh, the next three weeks are going to be absolutely amazing. I want to give honor to our creative team who's worked feverishly around the clock, getting ready um, to, to share what God's, what God's going to be doing in the month of November here at Highlands. I know that what we've, we've done is we've connected blockbuster movie hits with the gospel and, and, and really biblical principles, and we use those, those movies like Jesus did parables. He would tell stories that would highlight kingdom principles. And that's what we're gonna be doing all throughout the month of November. But we've done all that we can do, but here's something that we can't do. We don't know your friends, so we cannot invite your friends. We need you to be a bringer, come on, in November. And it's not just about growing for growth's sake. It's about reaching because God loves people. Let me say that again. God loves people. And I want us to love people. And I, I want us to like people. I want us to be around people. I want us to enjoy people and, and, and invite them to come along and, and meet the God that is changing your life. So come on, this, this is going to be an important week for our church uh, not just this week, but especially this week as we launch into this series this coming weekend. And um, today is, is what we call a standalone message. What a standalone is, is it's not attached to any particular series, theme, or idea. So here's what it is. Let the preacher preach, everybody. And I, I've got a word that's been stirring in my heart for some time, and this is it, is I want us as a church, Highlands Church, to, to I want to help us to become a going group instead of just a gathering group. We're living in a day and age that come and see, come and hear the all-star, come and see the show, come and experience what we can do. The world is like, been there, done that, got the t-shirt, really not that impressed. So what I wanna do is I want to equip you to go and be and preach and share and live and invest in the people. And so we're gonna continue to, to provide amazing content and, 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 and great experiences. I mean, come on now. When Pastor Coop starts singing old school hymns, I'm like, oh, Jesus is in the building. What did, I asked him off saying, I said, what do you know about that song? You are too young to know that song. He goes, preacher, come on now. And we'll always do that because that's the value here is we love God. We love to worship God. We love God's presence. We long to be in the presence of God corporately as a church, but at some point, you have got to leave the building. Elvis has left the building. You've got to leave the building, and you are the only representation of Jesus that the world will see. Yes, I believe they're coming next weekend. Yes, I believe we'll pack it out. I believe that even all the way up to Christmas Eve will be just be multiples of standing room only. That's what I'm praying. And it's not about an ego. It's about people experiencing the presence and the power of God. But at some point, the biggest win of any pastor is when they get wind of one of the people in their church walking across the lawn and sharing their life, and sharing their faith. When a student walks across the hallway, across the cafeteria, across the ball field and encourages and speaks life into another student and shares Jesus with the other student, that's when the gospel is real. 
That's when it's no longer smoke and mirrors. That's when life change happens. And I believe that's when revival will hit our country like never before. So that's the world's longest intro. (laughs) But what I want to do is I'm going to pray. And I want you and me, I want us to open up our minds and open up our eyes, our heart, to what God is speaking to us as we enter this season of outreach. All right? You guys ready to pray? Heavenly Father, when we pray the prayer, sin revival, Lord, we want to be really specific. We're not just saying, send us a lot of church meetings. We're saying, breathe on your people. Empower your body. Jesus, you are the head. We are the body. Empower us that we can go live out this life that's so clear that this group of people has a connection and a relationship with Jesus that it cannot be denied. Today, God, change us. Change us from the inside out. There are people under the sound of my voice, God, with us and joining us online right now. They're at the end of their rope. And God, I'm asking you to save them. Make all things new. Resurrect that dead life. Redeem that wayward child. Restore the addicted. Set them free. Do what only you can do, God. Maybe there's a relationship that's gone sideways. God, restore it. Heal it. Maybe it's a a report they've gotten from the doctor that it's like a gut punch. They were not expecting that. God, I pray peace and healing into that family right now. This is the day that the Lord has made here at Highland. And we are so grateful. We make the choice to rejoice and be glad in it. We're so glad in it. To God be the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Man, we can, we can say amen and go home. It would still be, man, it was good to be in the house of God. But I'm not going to do it because I've been preparing for you. Okay, nice try. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 is where we're going to be today, Uh, and and also over in in Matthew chapter 9, if you want to turn there in your Bible or your smartphones. But but 2 Corinthians chapter 5, this is the Apostle Paul writing to the church of Corinth. Corinth was a a buck wild church. Corinth was known for its, its, uh, it was was a bay city. There's something about bay cities, y'all, and I lived in one, and so I'm, I'm Preaching to the choir. It's something about a beach town, something about a bay city, something about a hub area, you know, a, a, a hub community that uh, it gets a little crazy. And so Paul is saying, hey, 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 listen, remember who you belong to. Remember who you represent. And he said, for God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. And that's our, that's our message as well, guys. He gave us this message of reconciliation. So we are Christ ambassadors. Everybody say ambassadors. Ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. Come back to God. And I was thinking about this idea of, of being an ambassador. And, and I, man, I, I, I would have kind of loved that, that job. What a cool gig to, to be the represent, representative of, of our country. And I was thinking about, you know, that, that job line was not available at job fair at my high school. How about you guys? Like, it just wasn't there, you know, because if it was, I'd be like, yeah, 
want to travel. I want to, I want to, yeah, yeah, I want that job, that J-O-B right there. I don't know, political science, like what are you, what is your major? You know, um, different languages, I'm sure. But, but, and I always thought that would be cool, but there are two main roles of an ambassador. And if, you, if you're not aware of this, this is, I mean, this is any country, but the first one is, is to maintain diplomatic relationships with the receiving state. You've got to have some relationships there or your stay is going to be very short-lived. And then the other, the other role is this, to promote your country's policies and strategies. We're going to promote what we do. We want to listen to what you do, but this, we're, we, we want to promote our policies and, and our strategies and see how how we can work together, because we're not changing. And when Jesus walked the earth, he was heaven's ambassador. Come on now. Like he, he said things like, hey, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. In other words, if you've heard me speak, you've, I speak on behalf of heaven. He, 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 when he died on the cross and God raised him from the dead, he, he had authority over death, hell, and the grave. And then he said in Matthew 28, he said, hey guys, for all of the authority of heaven and earth is given to me, and he goes like this, now you go. In other words, the authority, I represent heaven, now you are empowered and equipped to be my representation on the earth. You go, it's your turn. This is on you. And, and, and I, I, I was thinking, man, that's the problem. <laughs> because remember the two main roles of the ambassador. I maintain diplomatic relationships with the receiving state. And honestly, guys, we Christians, we've, we haven't done a very good job at cultivating relationships in the world that Jesus died to save. We, we, it's almost like we are here, but we are tolerating here. No, 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 we can't do that. We've got to cultivate those relationships, but then also promote your country's policies and strategies. We Christians aren't doing a very good job promoting the culture and the values and priorities of our kingdom, right? So here's my goal today. Here's my goal today. I want us to help us get better and represent better where we're from to a world that desperately needs what we have. <laughs> In Matthew chapter nine, I think I've preached on this scripture, I can't tell you how many times, but I seem, I seem to go back to this. When Jesus saw the crowds, this is how he did it. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them. Everybody say compassion. This wasn't feeling sorry. This is a, this is a, a gut punch. There was a grieving, compassion on them. He wasn't mad at them because they were dysfunctional. He, he had compassion on them because they were confused, because they were helpless. The reason they were confused and they were helpless is they were like a sheep without a shepherd. And if we're going to be God's representation of, of the kingdom here on earth, what I want to do is, is we need to, to, to do three things that I believe that if we begin to do these things, not just for the November series, not just through the end of the year for Christmas Eve and, and, and packing the place out again, but if we can adopt these things, I believe that we will represent who we belong to and where we're from better than ever. Why? Because God wants to bring revival through your family. All right? The first thing is this, is number one, we need to see the crowds. Jesus saw the crowds. See the crowds because the church will never reach who we refuse to see. We say that we love people, but we don't see people. Right? I dare you this week to ask God to help you begin to see people the way that he sees people, you'll notice that your compassion will begin to rise as you encounter others. The disciple John recorded this conversation, John 4, 35, and he goes, listen, guys, Jesus said, I tell you, open your eyes and look to the, f it's, it's, it's not like they were doing life with their eyes shut, but he's like, you're seeing, but you're not seeing. Open your eyes to the fields. They are ripe for the harvest. Here's some practical advice for you. It's, if you're going to see a, be a person who loves like Jesus, you're going to have to slow down and open your eyes. You'll experience more walking than you will driving. You'll experience more driving than you will flying. The faster you go in life, the less you will see. 
And because we have, we have got no more margin in our life because of our calendars, we go from thing to thing to thing to appointment to appointment to appointment. And I'm, I'm guilty of it as well. But, but because we do that, we miss divine opportunities. We meet, we miss divine, God-ordained conversations because I've got no more room in my day. For the first, for the first time in my life, a couple months ago, I think it was, I missed a, a plane flight. Do you know the anxiety that comes when you miss a flight? Like, I, 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 I mean, I like, I like margin. I like plenty of margin. But I, I, it was 100% on me, totally 100% on me. And, um, and, and so I got to my appointment, and um, it, was, it was really late the night before I spoke the, day, the next day. And it was, I was not at my best because I had no more margin. I was, it, it was, I was hijacked. It was awful. So I had, I had the flight to, to, uh, to speak last weekend. And I don't do this often, everybody, just so you know, if you're a guest with us today, I don't bounce around and speak everywhere. I, I do it a handful of times a year and only at places that, uh, not because I'm invited, but p- places that I pray about going, all right, God, you want me to go, then I'll go. But I was doing this and, and helping out a friend. And because I learned my lesson and because I remember how nauseous I was running through the Atlanta airport, and a um, great place to run, by the way. They're always really welcoming there in Atlanta. Yeah. Um, I got to the airport grossly early, like ridiculously early. Like, what do I do now early? And I'm okay with that. And I began to watch people who were just like me when I missed my flight, they were, they were running. They were, I mean, husbands and wives were fighting. I'm like, yes, this is all. Can I just tell you, the Atlanta airport is the best people watching you will ever have. It's, it's better than Christmas Eve at the mall. Young people, the mall are big buildings <laughs> with stores that used to be in them. Um, here, here, here's the question. Why, why, why don't, why don't we, there's, I mean, I can't even, I don't, this is probably, I can Google the number, how many people are in that one particular airport, but why don't we see them? Why don't we see them? Let me ask you a question. When is the last time you started your day with this prayer? God, help me see somebody today. There was a, there was a, a an elderly woman, uh, a, a while back, and Sandra and I were in the airport, and and she she um, she I, I I she was talking to herself, and she was like, I I don't know where's the the baggage I'm, I'm supposed to see baggage claim. Well, you know when you start seeing someone, not just as an old person, but that could be my grandmother. That's somebody's grandmother. And so, so I, I, I can be intimidating as a, as a guy walking up to a stranger in the airport, just as I'm a little bit like on, on caution. And so Sandra said, hey, let's, let's help. I see her. And she said, I, I, I have someone that's supposed to pick me up. But I said, okay. I said, well, you know what? We're going to baggage claim. You're going to baggage claim too. I can take you there. I don't know where my bag is. That's okay. Well, I don't know where my bag is either. We're, I, hope it's, I hope they're all waiting for us there. And we got to know her from, from the plane train. Come on, Atlanta. The plane train all the way to baggage claim. And, and, and so she said, well, there's, I don't know who it is. And, and so I said, well, and so we, we called the person on, the, on her phone. I said, hey, I'm, this is my wife. This is Sandra. And I'm not some crazy person in Atlanta. That guy is, but I'm not. So I got on the phone with the driver. Hey, yeah, where are you? He goes, well, I'm just over here in baggage. Well, I'm over here too. You know what? It was was just fun to be human again. We got to get better at being human. Instead of, we got to go, we got places to be. So does grandma. And we want to make sure that grandma arrives safely. Can we just get better at loving people? Here's my, my a pastor. My pastor told me this 15 years ago. It's a timeless truth. I've never forgotten it. He said, every, he goes, how every city has keys. Every city has keys to it. And if you'll find the need in your city, 
that, that, key will un, that key to meeting that need will unlock that city and the city will open its arms to you. He said, you're gonna have a hard problem in this city finding the need because it's so affluent. He says, just because, just because it's got money doesn't mean it doesn't have need. But it's a little bit more difficult to identify that need because of the wealth. Amen? Okay. So here's, here's a couple things that I want you to open your eyes. But I'm going to warn you, once you see these things, you can't unsee them. Okay. Here's, here's a, a, a need, some keys. These are some people that I've walked past a million times and I didn't see them. And it's this. Total, 2021 drug overdoses, 107,622 in our country. 107,622 people died of a drug overdose. Okay, can I tell you something? That's a need in our city. That's a need in, in North Metro Atlanta. It, our, our drug problem is it, it has lipstick on it. It's, it looks good. It hides behind double, double glass doors. But that's, that's a problem. And here's some perspective. With, with, with 2020 was a record year of, of, with 93,000. Now it's 100, 107. But the number one killer in ages 18 to 45 is fentanyl overdoses, 79,000 people. Okay, fentanyl is a synthetic opioid that's 100 times stronger than morphine. It's 50 times stronger than heroin, and it's in your schools. It's in your neighborhoods, okay? Please hear me. I'm not dismissing COVID. COVID was an awful, it was horrific, and, and I know some of our families lost loved ones with that sickness, but fentanyl overdoses never even made it to the front page. Why? We just didn't see it. We, we just didn't see it. It's a key. Here's another one. Uh, pa parents, you need to wake up. Your kids can get that on links on Snapchat. All right, here, here's another one. The state level data, total abortions in Georgia, 37,533. This number includes abortions performed on out-of-state residents, but does not include abortions performed on Georgia residents in other states. Now, we gasp at that number. We gasp at that number, but, but we need to become part of the solution. So if you're like, oh, I can't believe that. Well, are you considering adoption or fostering? Guys, I'm talking about being the hands and feet of Jesus and getting involved in the process. Let me read this scripture again just so it sinks in. 2 Corinthians 5.20, so we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. There are, there's need all around us, and we walk right by it because maybe we haven't, we haven't prayed and asked God, God, open my eyes today. Help me to see people, not as statistics, but as precious, as people that Jesus died for. We, we, we like verses like this, and we say amen, but, but here's the problem. In, 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 Ma, in Jesus' day, in Matthew chapter 9, then Jesus said to his disciple, the harvest is great, but the workers are, they like to go to church, but they just never leave church. They like altar calls, but they don't go live it out, right? Here's another way of saying it. We have too many listeners and not enough enlisters. I'm preaching pretty good today. We have too many people that hear and they go, oh, they like online or they like on Instagram or they like on, but they don't get involved in the process. The, the Pareto principle, the 80-20 principle, it is a real, is a real thing that 20% of organizations, and can I say it, 20% of our church does 80% of the work. 20% of the, of the people who call Highlands Church home, they do 80% of the giving. Can, can you dream with me just for a second? Can we, let's flip the script. Imagine if 80% of the church said, I wanna be a part of this army of believers that goes into the school systems 
and equips this next generation to not even entertain anything to put inside their, their body. Hey, honey, hey, babe, listen, don't just, say no, don't just say no to drugs. Say yes, that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You don't belong to you. You can't do that to your body. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Ma'am, you don't have to entertain abortion. We love you. The church loves you, and we will walk beside you. We choose life. Can I say that in 2022? We do. There's no mistakes. God doesn't make mistakes. He loves people. There may be, there, hey, there may be an unplanned, <laughs> but it's not unplanned. It's an unplanned pregnancy, but it's not unplanned. God knows. God understands. And I, I, I'm, I was just praying and dreaming. Well, we're going to flip the script here at Highlands. We're going to be radically engaged in the Great Commission, engaged in church life, engaged in small groups, engaged in outreach, engaged in generosity. And it was true in Jesus' day, and it's true today, but it's not true at Highland Church in Jesus' name. Amen? But then Jesus doesn't leave them with a problem. He gives them a solution. He goes, all right, so what do we do? The laborers are few. We got a lot of listeners, but we don't have enough laborers. He says this, Ask the Lord, who is in charge of the harvest, to send out workers into his harvest. So number two, number two is this, never stop interceding for people. Okay, so number one, you, you can't help people if you don't see people. So you gotta see them the way that Jesus sees them. Number two, never stop interceding for all people. Watch this, not just the people that you like being around. <laughs> all people. First Timothy chapter two, I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Ask God to help them. Intercede, that word intercede means to stand in the place of, stand in the gap. Intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. This is good and this pleases our Savior. Who wants everybody to be saved and to understand the truth? This verse means pray for the people that irritate you. Pray for the people that makes you sigh. Come on, everybody, just smile at me. Pray for those people. Pray for the person in your neighborhood that just wears you out at the HOA meeting. Nervous laughter right there. Can I, can I tell you a personal story? I, I love personal stories. Now, everyone will remain anonymous, and don't be asking me what their address is. I'm not gonna tell you. Pray for the person who reports you to the Forsyth County Code Enforcement saying that you're running a church out of your house. When you know good and well it was just the Highlands Church small group meeting at your house, growing in their faith, praying for one another, encouraging one another, eating really good, having a good time, right? Right? Uh, the, it's really fun when, when officers come knocking at your door. And they go, excuse me, um, is this this address? Yes, yeah, hey guys, what can I do for you? Uh, well, um, um, are you running a church out of your house? And I went, not this house, no, no. Uh, I do pastor a church if that's what you're t talking about. So you're not taking up offerings. No, we don't do that with our small groups. We don't take up offerings. And okay, well, uh, we've got a complaint that you're running a church out of your house. Oh, Really? Praise the Lord on high. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord for, no, I didn't say that. I went, what? I said, dude, my name is Hal, Hal Hardy. I pastor Highlands Church, and this is, this is what's awesome about our church. The, the, the officer is like, oh, we know that church. You're over there by the city center. I said, yeah, they go, what's up, Pastor Hal? I said, yeah, dude, we got a church. This is not a church, this is my house. Okay, Here, here's, here's the truth. Why do folks do stuff like that, all right? They may have heard the gospel, but their spiritual eyes can't see how good Jesus really is. Second Corinthians 4, 4 says it like this. The devil who rules this world has blinded the minds of those who do not believe, and they cannot see the light of the good news. They see traffic coming in and out of that driveway. What are they doing over there? Are they running drugs over there? 
They do that on, on, on Thursday nights. I know it. They're running drugs over there. And they always, always park right there. They always park. They're running drugs. I'm not running drugs. I'm a hope dealer, somebody. Come on. I mean, I need, I need a license tag. Hope dealer. I'm not running drugs. I'm running Jesus. We need Jesus in our neighborhoods. But why would people fight people being kind and loving and growing in their faith and challenging each other and stretching up? Why? Blinded eyes. So this is what I need us to do. The month of November, Lord, I take authority in Jesus' name over the spirit that's blinding the eyes of people that can't see. It's not that they're mean, they're blind, they can't see. Why would anyone say no to a God that wants to forgive them? Why would anyone want to say no to a God that brings hope? Why would anyone want to say no to a God that wants to heal their family? Blind eyes. So pray. Pray for everybody. Pray for everybody. Especially that joker. Number three. Number three. Since then, I've walked across the lawn and had fellowship. Number three. Number three. Get busy. And give God the glory for the growth. You got to get busy. I'm just waiting on God. God's actually waiting on you. Well, I just, I just don't want to get ahead of God. Do you know how hard it is? To, can I just dis, disarm something? Do you know how hard it is to get ahead of God? Well, I just, I just don't want to get ahead of God. I just want to wait on the Lord. I have to run to keep up with God. Your theology is a little wacky. Just love people. Serve Jesus, get involved, get plugged in, serve around the church, be on the dream team. Like get busy, serve, love. Trust that God in the plant, is in the planting and the watering process. If I'm gut level honest with you today, are y'all glad you came to church? If I can be gut level honest with you today, Rarely, I'm talking about like personal evangelism, going out into the highways and byways, going out into the ball fields and the schools and the airports and whatever, the office space. Rarely do you have one conversation, one conversation that, that, that has, that person has never heard of the, of the gospel, never heard of Jesus, and they come to, and they come to Christ at the, at, at, at the Seagate at Atlanta Airport. Like it just doesn't happen as much as I'd like it to, but I'm sure it does, but usually it's a string of seeds that were planted for a while. And it looks like this, and my neighbor follows Christ. And I overhear laughter coming out of their garage, laughter coming off of their back porch. And, and, and you know, I, and I went to work and I, one of my coworkers on my team, man, they are great. And, and uh, I see him pray over his meal Man, he, he is so encouraging to me. He is, he is so encouraging to me. And, and then I, I, was, I, I heard a song in a, in a waiting room, and it was singing about Jesus. And it was like everywhere I turn, everywhere I turn, it's like God, it's almost as if that God is just pursuing me. And so when you come along and you just have a conversation, and they go, you know what, I've... I, I know, I know I need to come back to God. I need to come back to God. Yes, you need to come back to God. And God loves you. He's not mad at you. You, you think that you, you closed the deal. The truth of the matter is there was seed planted for weeks and months and maybe even years and you just got to see it happen. The, the, the Apostle Paul said it like this. My work, guys, my lane is I plant. That's what I do. My work was to plant the seed in your heart. Now watch this. There was another guy named Apollos. Now Apollos watered his, his work, his job, his lane. He watered it, but watch, it was God. Not, it wasn't Apollos, it wasn't we, me. It was God who made the garden grow in your heart. God's the one that gives the increase. And I'm convinced that God is orchestrating all these conversations along the way. And I just tell you right now, are you planting seed? Are you watering seed? Are you trusting God for a harvest? Because that's what revival looks like. Planting, watering, harvest, planting. Well, I'm tired. I understand planting, 
water. I'm tired. I get it. Keep planting. Keep watering. I'm tired. Hey, we can sleep in heaven, <laughs> right? A plant. We're going to water. When you're at the water cooler, when you're at the coffee shop, when you're, you're watering, you're watering what someone else planted. I was next to someone, and if you're, if you're joining us online, you know who I'm talking to, sat next to me on, on the plane flight. And, and um, you know, I, I, I know that that you have had experience that was not really great, wasn't life-giving in the area of, of walking with God. But I'll tell you this, um, I hope that my time with you, because I gave her highlandschurch.tv and our YouTube addresses, I, I, I pray that my time with you, it water the seed that, that has already been sown in your heart. And I'm just gonna trust God that he's gonna mess with you and water that seed and, and bring you back to God. It's God that brings the increase. But are we just waiting on the increase without planting and watering? See, see people, because you can't help what you do not see. Never stop interceding. Pray, 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 pray for all the people. People you like, people you're not a fan of, doesn't matter, pray, pray, pray. And then number three, get busy. Get busy, plant, water. Plant, water, trust God for a harvest. Amen. You guys glad you came to church? Um, there, uh, let's all stand to our feet. There's one more scripture, but don't put that on the screen. I, I, I'm not gonna use that one. When I was little, when, when my kids were little, we would drop off the, uh, our, my daughters over at the grandparents' house. And I would say this, <laughs> uh, encouraging them to not act a fool. I say, remember your last name. Remember who you are. Remember who you belong to. In other words, represent well. <laughs> and now we don't leave with grandparents, we just leave. <laughs> but before we leave, we say, remember who you belong to. Remember your last name. Represent God's kingdom well. Remember the name on the back of your jersey. You're a hardy, and we belong to Jesus. So my charge to you, Highlands, remember the name of Jesus. Remember who you belong to. Not just the church that you are a part of. Remember the family of God that you've been adopted into according to the word of God. And as you do, November is going to be a really fun month as we plant, as we water, as God gives the increase. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to share your word. I pray that it stirred, it stirred us to slow down. It stirred us to open up our eyes. and It stirred us to see people and to love people the way that Jesus did and continues to see and love. And through us, God, I, I, I ask you that, that we don't get so blind to the need around us, that there's so many other pain points and need around us, but we can live aware that people are broken by the world and broken in addiction and broken by decisions. But God, it's God that, it's only you that can heal their heart. So, Lord, we can be the conduits of that healing this week. Lord, we pray for our community. We pray for our missions partners right now. We lift them up to you. Minister through them on the other side of the globe and right here in our backyard. God, today we've planted. Today we watered. God, I'm asking you to give the increase. In an attitude of prayer, if you're here today, you would say, Pastor, I'm not where I used to be in my walk with God, and, and I, I, wanna, I wanna have a close relationship with the Lord, and I want that. I want that today. I don't wanna, I keep postponing it. I keep procrastinating. All right, next week, and then next week, and next week. When I woke up today, when I drove on the campus, and there was something in my heart, 
it was, it was a sense of urgency. And I got here around the worship and, and man, God, you've been, God's been messing with me. And, and some things that you said, some things that were sung has been stirring my heart. And today, today I want to come home. Today I want to I wanna know Jesus in a real, tangible, practical way. I want my past forgiven. I want my sins forgiven. I want, I want restoration in my life. Or, or pastor, I, you know what? I've, I've never prayed that prayer. I'd like to start a relationship today. Any of those, those opportunities to make a decision today, I'm gonna say a general prayer over the crowd. If you'd be so bold and you would say, you know what, count me in on that. Count me in on that. I, I, want, I want a relationship with God. Today, I wanna renew that relationship. I wanna recommit or, or pastor, I wanna start that today. I'm not talking about church membership. I am talking about connecting with God right now in this moment. If you're here today, today and you would say, please count me in on that prayer, slip your hand up on the count of three. One, two, three. Anybody in this place? God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. That's awesome. This is what I wanna do. I wanna say this prayer. I want all of us to say this out loud, just as an encouragement to the folks that are saying yes to God today. In this exciting church, say this, say, Heavenly Father, please forgive me. I'm a sinner and I need a savior. I am so sorry for living life my way. I'm in a cycle of sin and today I wanna break it, but I don't have the power to do it. And that's why I'm coming to you Jesus, I surrender to you right now. Save me. Make all things new. I'm sorry for my past. I trust you with my future. Thank you for saving me. Holy Spirit, fill me with that power that the Bible talks about. The power to be a witness for Jesus. In Jesus' name. Father, thank you for, for making lives brand new. Thank you that revival. I believe, I believe it with all of my heart. I see with spiritual eyes a sweeping of revival across our nation. It's bigger than a political party. It's, it's bigger than an agenda. It is the kingdom of God coming down to earth, sweeping right before Jesus comes back. It's a great revival of souls being won and, and lives being changed and lives being healed. God, thank you that we get to be alive and be a part of this massive move of God. Now, God, we'll do our part and may it start this afternoon in my family. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you, be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and may God give you his peace. If you receive that blessing today, put your hands together. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate God. Come on, people are born again today. Well, thank you so much for worshiping with us today. What an incredible morning we've had. Listen. If you made a decision this morning, you heard us talk about it on the video announcements, there's a QR code near you. Please take a moment and scan that code. There's a place on that Connect card where you can mark your decision today. And we would love to get some resources in your hands because this is just the beginning of an incredible journey. And we would love to have the opportunity to walk alongside you on this journey. Well, thank you so much for your generosity. Can I tell you something? Because of your generosity, 90,000 kids all over the world have had the opportunity to have the Word of God placed in their hands. That's what you, Highlands Church, that's what you've done this year. So thank you so much. If you came prepared to worship God in your giving, you can do so digitally, or you can drop your check in the uh, offering containers attached to the back walls of the auditorium as you leave. Middle schoolers, high schoolers, we've got six to eight tonight, small group, you do not wanna miss it, be here. And then at the movies is next Sunday, guys, listen, be a bringer. Let's, let's lift our eyes up to the harvest and let's invite our coworkers, our, our classmates, our teammates, let's get them in the house so that they can hear the good news and so that they can learn more about Jesus. Hey, if you have a, 
a prayer need today, we would love to have the opportunity to pray with you personally. So we have members of our prayer team on either side of the platform this morning. As we're dismissed, if you would like personal prayer, please make your way forward and give us the opportunity to pray with you. We love you so much. Thank you so much for worshiping with us. Hey, if you're new around here, we would love to have the opportunity to get to know you. And you can do that today. Just walk right across the lobby to Dream Team Central. And our next steps uh, team will be there to greet you. And Pastor Hal and I will, will make a, a round in there to say hello as well. We would love to get to know you better. Have an incredible week, everyone. And we'll see you next Sunday. Hey, with a friend. We love you guys. Talk to you later. Bye.